guys, welcome to my 1988 crown coach. My name is Jimmy Free. Um, year before last, I was experiencing very high rent in Santa Monica and it was killing me. And so out of necessity, I was like, I gotta find another cheaper way to live. So I jumped onto eBay and I put a bid down on this bus and then I started investigating crown and I found that they are an amazing company. They're out of business now, unfortunately, but they did things in such a nice way that um, I had to have it. So um, let's, let me show you what I've got. We started out with the, the wood. So I bought the bus and my next purchase was the wood. Uh, I had to have this imported from Georgia and they brought it up to, um, they brought it all the way over across the continent to um, Los Angeles area. So it's uh, hickory, wide plank and very long length so that I was able to get the the same board to go up the wall. So, um, one of the things I did, a lot of times when people are doing a bus, they think about weight and they think it's really critical that they trim every little thing like a backpacker. And I just decided that is just not the case with this bus. Um, I thought of it like a bull with, um, you know, the birds that sit on the back of the bull. So the bull doesn't care if there's one bird or five birds. It doesn't even affect the bull at all. And that's kind of the same thing with this. So I put real granite. It does not care. The bus does not care. Um, I was going to buy some very expensive Lowe's cabinet. And I went there and looked at the prices. And they had these really cool features where you just kind of like close it and then it self-closes. And that was really cool. I really wanted that feature. But it was $3,000 for these two cabinets. And so instead... Um, I just decided, well, before I spend that money, I should at least do a mock-up. So I was going to get some 2 by 4s and some plywood and just hack it together. And, and so I drew it out on uh, graph paper. And then when I got done with the drawing, I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> so we just decided to build it ourselves. We used um, pine trees that had died from the beetles, the bark beetles. And I had them sawed up just exactly to these dimensions. And I bolted them together with these rusty bolts. I'm really proud of this drawer. I really wanted a, a two-tier thing. And um, so I looked online to see about all the hardware to get that done. And it was getting so darn complicated. And I was just like, I'm going to old school. We're just going to have wood on wood. So as long as you put uh, soap, you just rub a little bar soap right here. Or beeswax would also work. And if you make it just right, the trick with having this done right is that it's got to be tight, but not too tight. If you get it too loose, it starts doing this clank and it won't move. Or if you get it too tight, of course, it wouldn't move. So, um, this system, I've never seen this before, but I just decided to do this. So, they're just like apple boxes. The idea is that once they're in there, they don't move around. And then I noticed I had some space under here, so I just built in more drawers. Oh, the, the rack above. It's like, where do you put your wet dishes? So most people put their wet dishes right here, and they let them drain into the sink. And I was like, well, this is really valuable real estate. And when you have only 240 square feet, you have to really think, how can I maximize my space? And this space is really premium for chopping veggies or fruits. So I decided, why don't we have it drain up here? And then when it's all done draining, where do we keep it? Just let it stay right there so there's less movement. You get your dishes uh, cleaned, you get them rinsed, you put them here, you forget them. Um, oh, I was standing here talking to my friend one time and I said, I've got all this space under the bed but um, I can't get access to it because I don't know, maybe I should lift the bed or I don't know, what if I had a big drawer? So out of that conversation came this big drawer that just keeps going. And so you've got a his and hers closet basically in this drawer. Um, so the queen size bed and then I did the nightstands. Um, that was really fun. Just made them out of a stack of plywood. The granite tops on these are from the cutout here in the sink. Just cut that right in two and then shake, shaped it. We got a, just a bucket toilet. It does have a urine diverter. Oh, this is important. Urine diversion. We don't know about this in America yet. 
you need to keep your poop and your pee separate if you're going to take care of it yourself. That's the key. If you mix those two things, they, they're vile, they're nasty, and you don't want to deal with it. You separate. The urine goes one place, poop goes another. Keep the poop dry. Sawdust is the kind of the key there. Got our uh, bathtub. Just It's just a horse trough with the shower. And got a wood stove. Surprisingly difficult to keep this thing warm. I think what I need to do yet is um, put on the insulated window covering. But you can have a fire going in here and it's strange. It's like warm right here. And then you walk down there and it's not warm down there. So that is still an issue. And even if you put a fan and you blow it, it's, it's really challenging. I'm, I'm talking about really super cold nights, like into the 20s. So. And what bus would be complete without its own little recording studio? And if you can use your imagination and just imagine a uh, 88 key keyboard here, but I just sold that. I'm going to get another one. So, um, yeah, that's my bus. Mm -hmm.